episode two, we last left off to the pounding and screaming of Barry and Vern, two dim-witted men just trying to drop off a casket bearing the remains of Major Minor. Or perhaps they have something more in mind. Perhaps there is something more to everyone gathered here at Minor Manor tonight. For Sam and Mara, everyone is a suspect. Hopefully, they will remember all the clues and not forget any names. Thank goodness you let us in. There's a monster out there, a vampire. A vampire? Yeah, a vampire. Could have been a zombie. I don't know for sure, it was dark. A hideous figure staggered toward us with a tire iron. Wait a minute, someone is out there with a tire iron? Not someone, something. A hideous, a vampire. It looked horrible. We drove it off with rocks and big sticks. Good heavens, you attacked this man's wife. Was this creature also carrying my luggage? Your wife is out there? You can't be too careful. Could be a deranged stranger. Ought not. Release the hounds. We're sorry, mister. But in the dark, your wife looks like a monster. You should see her in the daylight. After all, she did have a tire iron. Which means she forgot the luggage. Huh. We'll go out and get her. With sticks? No. We, no. We'll, I mean, we'll bring the poor woman in. We have to get the casket anyway. Uh, let's get going, Vern. Me? The lousy weather, huh, pal? A warm front, having pushed up from the Gulf, has been trapped between cold air masses moving down from the northwest and another pushing down from Maine. The warm air mass is occluded, trapped, and pushed upwards. Resultant heavy rains are expected for the next 10 to 12 hours. This will be followed by three to four hours of heavy and foreboding fog. What are you, some kind of weatherman? You must be another detective? Uh, me? No, no, I'm the funeral director. Say, are we at the right place? No, sir. The right place used to be a quarter mile up the road, but it burned down under mysterious circumstances. You could hear old man Wright shrieking as the flames consumed his burning body. <laughs> oh, swell digs. Hey, nice looking bear skin. Oh. I should have warned you, she's uh, sensitive about the decor. Excuse me, butler? Yeah? I mean James. Yes, sir? Not you, Ms. James. I mean James, the butler. Sir? How many doors does this place got? Knock it off, Vern. In case I want to make up quick exits, and I do. Why don't we all just calm down and change the subject? We could talk about the weather. No! no! You'd better get going. That poor woman. Uh, yeah, right. And don't forget my luggage. James, where are the others here? I'm afraid I don't know, sir. Not James, Miss James. I meant the butler. Those who arrived early ate at eight. The others will dine at nine. They are in the solarium for cocktails. Now you're talking. Take me to them. Walk this way, sir. You're kidding, right? I beg your pardon, sir? Why should I walk that way? Well, sir, the house is rather old, and several of the trap doors are loose. Trap doors? Just this way, past the bayonet collection, through the sword and dagger room, past the shrunken heads, and left through the medieval torture exhibit. You didn't tell me that that Neanderthal would be here. Sam, I had no idea. He didn't tell you that he was in line for a fortune? 
If you had, do you think I had a question for you? May I ask the reason for your visit to Minor Manor on a night such as this? Not that you're not welcome. <laughs> well, now that we're alone. We have a telegram. Sam, read the lady the telegram. I need Iowa's top cop stop. A murderer must be stopped, stop. Get to Minor Manor as quick as you can go, stop. All other cases must be dropped, stop. Signed, the Major Minor. So the Major feared for his life, or perhaps the life of someone or some ones, in this very place on this very wretched night. This is a mystery. How strange. That the Major would correctly suspect an attempt on his life? No, that someone would send a telegram in this day and age. I mean, it's 2020, for heaven's sakes. There may be a murder in this very house. Come mm. on, I mean, wouldn't you send an email or a text message? If you ask me, the strangest mystery is how many people in this house have the same first name as other people's last names. I mean, really. No one in this house is safe, and in this weather, no one can leave. I mean, where do you even go to send a telegram these days? That's nothing compared to this name thing. I mean, your first name is the same as the weather person's last name, and your last name is the same as the butler's first name? Maybe we should focus on that danger at hand. Well, I mean, the next thing you'll be telling me is that the Pony Express is still in business. Imagine the odds against all this name confusion in such a small group. Well, I wouldn't say it's unheard of. Someone sending a telegram. <laughs> now that's unheard of. It's James! The murder! Don't you think it's strange that we have a butler and a man named Butler and a first name James and a last name James? Sure. Mara! The murder! Murder? Why ever would the Major have any reasons to harbor suspicions of homicide? Well, he did die a mysterious death shortly after sending the telegram. Mysterious? Why, his death was ruled accidental. He jumped out of a plane over Needles National Park and his chute failed to open. And the night before his death? The chandelier? Well, the mansion is old. Where do you even go to send the telegram? And later that same day? The brake lines? Well, the Rolls Royce is a 50s model and it needed servicing after all. And the bullet that grazed his left temple! Well, we have posted no hunting signs on the property, but these careless hunters. Seriously, tell me, how many young people even know what a, what a telegram is? You don't find these accidents a tad suspicious? Not as suspicious as someone sending a telegram. Hmm, now that you mention it, the Major did have a lot of enemies. He made his fortune in the pet rock business in the 60s. Then he tripled his fortune when he cornered the Chia pet market. Finally, he ruthlessly clawed his way to become the world's top supplier of gags and novelties. He was known as the Whoopie Cushion King. He has a huge Whoopie Cushion factory in Chicago. The Windy City. Think. Think hard. Is there anything out of the ordinary that I should know? Anything suspicious? Hmm. Midnight reading of the will. Burial in the yard? Dark and foreboding night. Hmm. No, nothing. Wait a minute. Folded papers. Folded papers? Yes. Each of the Major's heirs received intricately folded papers with clues to the Major's treasures. Treasure? Yes. You see, each of the Major's heirs who survives the night in this cursed and menacing house will share an equal share of the Major's considerable fortune. 
Anyone who doesn't survive the night, well, his portion will be split up between the survivors. What about the folded clues? Yes, I was getting to that. The Major stipulated that whoever finds his treasure hidden in the house, heirs, servants, anyone, will claim the treasure for his own. Upon his death, intricately folded papers were given to each of the heirs. The treasure is hidden somewhere in this house. So what's the treasure? Well, the Major never said, except that it was his greatest treasure. Many believe that it must be the eye of the of the eye of the idol of the hysterical monkey, a flawless gem that the major acquired in Congo. Folded clues. Yes, what do you make of it? The folded clues. I've got it. Yes. Must be fold and clue season. Fold and clue season. I'm going to forget you ever said that. Oh, good evening, Thomas. May I introduce the Van Bogarts? I'm Sam, and uh, this is Mara. Oh, uh, and who am I? Who are you? Oh, I asked you first. This is Thomas Paul. The Major's grandson. He was hit on the head with a coconut 19 years ago by a baboon as he was crossing the bridge to bring eyeglasses to the natives. He has amnesia? I do? That same vindictive monkey hit him on the head a month ago. And he didn't regain his memory? No, but he did forget that he has amnesia. You know, somebody ought to fix those loose strap doors, don't you think? Oh, we hired a man just a week ago. So why aren't they fixed? The man started work on Tuesday and simply disappeared. Butler, where's my drink? How should I know? Who asked you? You. I mean, James, the butler. James, sir. James Wentworth Baker. Baker. I'm a baker. I own two bakeries. Then James the butler meet Butler the baker, and I don't care who gives me a drink! Ah, Henrietta. San Van Bogart, Mara, may I introduce Miss Henrietta Wright? Major took Miss Wright in after the unfortunate and suspicious fire at the Wright place. Oh, the Wright place. The Wright place used to be a quarter mile up the road, but it went down under mysterious circumstances. You could hear old man Wright shrieking as- Yes, 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 we know, we know. So the Major took you in then, as ward. And housekeeper. Some say out of guilt. After all, the fire was certainly suspicious. You could hear old man write names. Begging your pardon, ma'am. Excuse me, folks. Where do you want the stiff? Casket, Vern Casket. You'll have to excuse Vern. He's our new internment intern, and I'm buried, buried deeply. Place the major on the coffee table, if you please, per his request in his last will and testament. What's going on in here? I heard screaming. The butler tells me the roads are washed out and somebody's investigating a murderer. The will is to be read at midnight. As in the reading of the will? Like in the movies? Oh, Sherry, may I present the major secretary, Miss Sherry Merlot? And Miss Merlot's doctor. Do you have the time? For what? Butler, do you have the time? 8.45. Nice watch, Butler. Thank you. Thanks. Don't be afraid, Bunny. Huh? Don't, 
Don't be funny. Pay attention. Mom! I was collecting gold coins. I was just about to advance to level six with a giant half to land on half hyena. Bonnie is a freshman in college, aren't you, dear? Yeah, Mom? Bunny? Bunny? Almost made the cheerleading squad, didn't you, dear? Huh? Yeah. I would have made it except for the stupid spelling test. Spelling test? I could have swore there's an E in victory. An E? Yeah. B I C T E R Y. Pay attention, pumpkin. Don't be frightened. Of what? The lightning, the loud thunder. Big deal. The coffin, the lid. It's it's moving. Um, yeah, should. No biggie. Uh, butler, call the police. Which one? Well, which one? The sheriff's office. Which butler? I'll attend to it. Never mind, the phone line's been cut. Did any of you folks know that we can't get any cell reception out here? No way. None whatsoever. Mom! Ah! Ah! What about Forrest's wife? You were supposed to find that poor woman and bring her in from the rain and cold. Oh, we brought her in, all right. She's in the box. <laughs> You put her in the coffin? Oh! To keep her out of the rain, yeah, it's pouring out there. Merciful heavens! What about the Major's body? Oh, we laid her on top, gentle-like. Oh, gracious! It's our roomiest model, and since we had to haul the casket in anyway. With a dead body? Dreadful! Relax, it's real comfortable. Velvet lining. Did you see the handle? Imitation pearl inlay. Brushed nickel. That poor woman will be traumatized. Well, at least she'll be dry. <coughs> We are born, we live, and we die. Such is life. What we do with the time we have is entirely up to us. For Darlene Howard, whether she was forced or by her own power, Darlene has taken a little trip in a casket with her late grandfather. Did she remember the luggage? We'll find out in episode three. But for now, it's a mystery to me. Hi, I'm Marty Adkins, president of Knoxville Area Community Theater. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of A Mystery to Me as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. This online presentation is one way KACT is adapted to the current pandemic. The safety of our audience, volunteers, and actors is a top priority for us. Speaking of the pandemic, KACT has been affected just like so many other businesses and community organizations. No live performances have meant no income for KACT in 2020. Yet we too have ongoing expenses that have to be covered. If you've enjoyed this presentation, I hope you'll consider making an online donation to CAC at the address shown below. Thanks for joining us on for this episode, and watch for our, our Facebook page and website for announcements about this and other projects. We hope to see you soon.